Welcome to 3 Minutes Fix. I'm happy to see you all again after a long break. First, I want to thank everyone for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers. I really appreciate your support. This is the start of a new tutorial series, and I'll aim to post a new video every two days to make it easier for me to record, edit, and share content with you. This video is just an introduction to let you know what we'll be working on and what we'll achieve together by the end of this series. So, let's get started. This tutorial demonstrates customizations that I have personally developed for the DoMovie app, originally created by Team One Byte Solution. To use the Do app legally, please purchase the official script from One Byte Solution on Code Canyon. My customizations are independent modifications and are not affiliated with endorsed by or supported by Team One Byte Solution. I am not the seller or developer of the original Do app, but am simply a fan and user sharing these enhancements for educational purposes. I've customized the dashboard while keeping the admin panel changes minimal to maintain the original look and feel. I added four sample content networks and incorporated recycler views to display the content clearly and efficiently. The view pager has been enhanced with a logo, giving it a more personalized touch. I've also added a tab view with three initial tabs, movies, TV shows, and animation. However, for this tutorial, we'll change the animation tab to live TV as it fits the app's purpose better and will make more sense for users. Now, let's talk about the search feature, which is crucial for any OTT app. With hundreds of movies, Users don't have time to manually search through them, so we've made the search page more engaging. We added a trending section with categories like action and adventure, but here's the catch. It's not based on complex algorithms or user data. It's simply a genre filter, and that's what makes it effective. Just like good VFX, where the line between practical effects and CGI is hard to tell, Users won't realize it's just a genre filter. They'll feel like it's real, dynamic, trending content. That's what makes your app sell. Next, let's talk about the upcoming section. I didn't make many changes here other than adding a logo and a tab. The Everyone is Watching section will feature popular movies and series. It's not a new feature. It was already included by our developer. I've just moved it to a better spot. I considered adding a player, but I found it a bit annoying when I tried it in Hotstar or Netflix, so I decided to keep it simple with just the pictures. I don't think we need an upcoming movie details page, but if you think it would be useful, let me know in the comments. That's all for the upcoming section. Next is the account section, which is like the heart of your app. It has two key help options, the FAQ page and the live person page, which can be accessed via Telegram or Chatbot. The About Us section shows details about your app and company. More importantly, there's the Credits section. Most of the libraries used in this project are open source. While it's not mandatory to give credit, it's highly recommended. So I created a Hall of Fame section to honor the libraries used, including the Do Team developers, who are featured as a priority for their excellent work. For login, I've temporarily added fingerprint sign-in, but for the tutorial, I think it's a good idea to offer double protection, allowing users to enable fingerprint authentication as an optional extra layer of security. Next, we have the Movie Details page. This is where the key information will drive users to engage with the movie. It includes the usual details like the logo, IMDb rating, genres, and a share option. This page also features tabs for the trailer, similar movies, and more about the movie. If possible, we'll explore using deep link technology for sharing so users can share the specific movie link instead of just the app URL. Next, let's talk about the content network. We're adding subheadings for each content network. For example, Amazon Prime has a lot of movies, so we added a recycler view with a title like Franchise to group related movies together. For instance, Back to the Future has three movies under Amazon Prime, so we display them under the Franchise section. 
This makes the app more organized and engaging for users, helping them easily see which movies belong to which network. For the trailer, I used a third-party API called Rapid API, which provides YouTube videos for a more authentic feel. However, for the tutorial, keeping in mind those who plan to publish the app on the store, I think I should use the official YouTube API library. But you still have time to convince me. Just let me know if you prefer the official YouTube API or the third-party Rapid API. I'll leave the decision to you. If I don't get a proper response, I will choose by default. Finally, the Movie Player page. This is the last place your users will land to watch the movies, so their journey through your app ends here. It's important to make this page as user-friendly as possible, with smooth controls and an, an immersive experience, ensuring they don't leave this activity unless they choose to. A seamless player experience will encourage them to stay and watch, enhancing user satisfaction and retention. For our modification, I made a change by adding a separate web series player. In the original version, everything was handled in one place, but I feel that having a dedicated player for web series will make the app feel more organized. However, I think it would be even more useful if we have separate activities for each player. This way, users can have a unique experience for each type of content. For example, by adding an episode recycler view, users can easily choose the next episode to watch. Instead of blindly clicking a next button, they can select the episode they want to watch, giving them more control over their viewing experience. Finally, I want to mention that we've upgraded our ExoPlayer to Media 3, which is more beneficial for staying up to date with the official library. Although it's not an issue to stay on the older ExoPlayer library, if you encounter any issues and go to the GitHub issue tracker, the developers at Google won't be able to help you with the older version, as it's officially deprecated and no longer supported. And that concludes the introduction. I've done my best to cover everything I promised in this video. Additionally, I'd like to note that this is an advanced tutorial, so you should already have a basic understanding of Android Studio IDE and some Java terms. You will need to purchase the Do app from the developer for the admin panel, and you can download the template, the basic Android project file, from GitHub to follow along with me. I'll be using that template as well. If you're new to Android development or need a refresher, I recommend watching the basic tutorial I posted on this channel to get familiar with the essentials before diving into this advanced tutorial. Thank you for watching.